My name is Sue Hayes and I'm a senior project manager within the environmental monitoring and data management section. The TRCA, we're just starting to figure out what bat species are present within our jurisdiction. It's something that we generally haven't been monitoring. Four of the eight species in Ontario have been listed as species at risk, so we're starting to do more and more, which is a good thing. But just in general, we don't know a lot about their ecology and their distribution, and we certainly don't know about it in our jurisdiction. So we've been starting to gather some data by having some um, acoustic monitoring devices that we've set up to uh, start to get some of that information. The Toronto Zoo just recently in the past couple of years have started to do um, some more in-depth uh, work with bats as well. Zoo staff have permission to enter onto our lands. Um, they do their bioacoustic monitoring. They set up mist nets, trap some bats, put some radio tags to track them in order to determine where there's hibernation roosts. By doing that, we also are collecting our own data and they're providing some analysis on that data for us. My name is Toby Thorne and I'm the project lead on our native bat conservation program at the Toronto Zoo. With our bat program at the zoo, we're working to fill in knowledge gaps for Ontario bat species focusing in the, the south of the province and around the greater Toronto area. Ontario bats face a, a number of conservation threats. The biggest one and the one that's driving most of the concern is white nose syndrome and it's a fungal disease that affects bats that hibernate in caves. And we don't have a huge handle on how it's affecting them because we weren't really monitoring them before this has happened. Bats are quite difficult to monitor because they're so small and they fly at night and they're hard to find. Um, but because they find their way in the dark using echolocation, we can listen into that and that's actually information the bats are putting out into the environment. So we use acoustic monitors which record their echolocation sounds which we can often identify to species. This is uh, kind of an example of what we look at when we're analyzing the acoustic data. So it's kind of counterintuitive that it's sound recordings, but we look at it visually instead of listening to it. Uh, the partnership with the TRCA is a really important part of this project because uh, the TRCA owns a lot of land around the GTA um, and it's conservation land which is a good place to look for bats, is where they're likely to be, and then is under good management to sort of keep that protected and help the bats in the longer term.